Warm words of welcome, a special thank you to the guests who have traveled from the Lower 48 to be here. We are so grateful and excited to hear your presentations. And on behalf of Akimi, thank you all for being here, those of you in the room, as well as those of you in the Zoom room. I'm looking at one of these cameras. Um, I'm here to introduce the th this year's, the theme of this year's music summit, which is From Obstacles to Opportunity. So, hello, I am Lisa Hawkins. I work for Akimi slash Music Alaska slash Northern Culture Exchange, the whole family of organizations, um, doing social media and marketing and web design and administrative work and stuff. So, uh, I am also an artist. Um, I am a full-time manager and performer in Pipeline Vocal Project, which is an... Oh, thank you. Wow. <laughs> Some of you have heard of us. Yay. Um, we are an acapella group based in Anchorage, Alaska, and um, we have been very blessed post-COVID to be busy doing international music ambassadorship and touring. Uh, we were most recently in Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Jordan and Hong Kong to name a few. And uh, I've been learning a lot about uh, different music industries, music communities, and how they function within their own structures. So as I introduce the theme, I wanted to give you some context because it does involve a little bit of uh, my own story. So in the early days of establishing Pipeline Vocal Project, I found myself feeling extremely overwhelmed by what I felt were the obstacles that were in my way to quote unquote, make it. Um, being from Alaska, being so far away, being a woman in the contemporary a cappella industry, they just felt very overwhelming to me. Um, I, I'm sure many of you in this room can understand the hurdles that come with the geographical location of Alaska, being so isolated from everything else. And as far as context for being a woman in contemporary a cappella, there are no all female groups full time doing it out there until now. And thank you. <laughs> Um, just to give you some perspective, women weren't even allowed to be members of the Barbershop Harmony Society until 2018. That was, <laughs> yes, that was six years ago. So in 2018 and 2019, as I was conceptualizing this idea of Pipeline Vocal Project, I didn't even have the name yet. Um, after I processed the overwhelm and started to get ready for action, I started to change my mindset. So instead of, we're from Alaska, we could never make a living doing this, too. We're from Alaska. That makes us rare, interesting, marketable, desirable. Going from, there are no women in contemporary a cappella, there are no groups to even audition for, to, there are no women in a cappella. That makes us rare, interesting, marketable, desirable. So these two factors that I thought were big obstacles actually became a huge part of our brand. And uh, frankly, it's these two traits that have really gotten us into a lot of doors, have started a lot of conversation because people are intrigued. And uh, that mindset of turning obstacles into opportunities, into strengths, um, has really helped me in my career. So now I, I teach some classes at different acapella festivals and conferences, and one of the classes I teach is, is from obstacles to opportunities. So when the theme, the, the, the prompt of the theme came up this year, um, I have been working under Akimi and NCE slash Music Alaska uh, for about two years now, understanding its goals, better understanding our music ecosystem, and what we as an organization want to provide for the community. This theme, this phrase just kept popping into my mind, um, and it just felt like the perfect fit. Because I think the Alaska music community has so much to offer, has so much that is rare interesting, marketable, and desirable. We just have to frame it that way. And there are so many ways to overcome those obstacles, whether that be turning them into strengths, or maybe it's just literally making them smaller by collaborating with the people in this room, the amazing talent, the brains, brain power in this room. Maybe it's cross-pollinating between within our community to elevate each other up, to amplify our voices. So. I hope that as we get inspired by the many presentations that we will hear today, and we will hear from some brilliant minds, that you absorb the information with this theme in mind, from obstacles to opportunities. So, but I've talked long enough. 
Um, I would like to welcome, and before we kick off the presentations, Ingville back onto the stage to talk to you about the family of organizations that I listed that are many. <laughs> and she's going to, you're going to come up this way? Okay. Please welcome Ingville Van Gudu. Thank you. Thanks again. And you could say that, um, I'm just going to see if I can move this forward here. Oh, maybe this is the DIY. It's a different presentation. No. Am I doing the wrong way? Well, I'm really technically um, on top of this. This is part of the thing. Yeah, OK, I see what's going on. You could say that um, a culture or a community is defined by how it has turned obstacles into opportunity. All over the circumpolar north, all living things in this place is actually a proof that in order to survive and thrive, you have to adapt and work constructively with a set of conditions that's given. And don't forget that part of thriving is actually enjoying what you're doing. My ongoing learning experience is actually that, because I get a little um, over-attached to the result, and I'm learning to enjoy what I'm doing all the time and allowing things to take the time that they have to take. That makes it a lot more enjoyable. So, is it a hurdle or is it something fun to jump over? <laughs> I hope that we keep learning from this place and from each other uh, how to build and shape culture and community with an outlook of joy and opportunity. So Alaskans today are lucky have you thought about that? We're actually really lucky right now in that we have a lot of opportunity to shape our future. And the future that we are going to concern ourselves with today and tomorrow is, of course, the future of our music community. And um, the way I would like for people to think about this is that if something is missing in our community, then we have the opportunity to create it and shape it from scratch. And if something isn't working, we can actually fix it. And it can be a good idea, I think, in both those cases, both creating and fixing, to look around and see what others have done and learn what works. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today and tomorrow, learning from a lot of people who have tried things and see what can work for us. Not quite sure, but I think I'd have an obstacle, but I also have an opportunity to learn it. There you go. <clears throat> in the two decades that I have lived in Alaska, I have had the opportunity to dream up and build a lot of different things from scratch. And in the past few years, much of the attention that I have had to give has been on the founding and developing and building Akimi. In the beginning, I remember we used to say to each other, we don't know what we don't know. And that was both sometimes in frustration, and sometimes it was sort of like a way to get out of it. The fact that we, we're we ignorant, right? We're remote, we're underserved. And um, then, since then, we've had, since the first summit, we've had a chance to learn so much. And, um, this immense amount of learning, I would say, and building, uh, we're going to hear more about from our master builder, Marion Cole, who uh, is, has been doing a lot of work, in particular this last year, and she's going to tell us of one of her most recent learning experiences, which is the Alaska Music Census. But before that, allow me to plug one other opportunity that Akimi has created for you, for us, in the past year, and that's open for everyone to take part in. That's the Alaska Playlist Project. Have you all seen this? Have you, are you all on there? Yes? Absolutely. Alaska Playlist Project was properly launched in 
November, but I think it's been launched for a long time in 2023. Marion, Emily Anderson, and Ed Schoenfeld, thank you so much for all the amazing work that you did putting that together. Um, <clears throat> music Alaska Spotify playlist has over 20 hours of Alaskan music. Cause Spotify bought to recognize that there's a category called Alaskan music, and now Alaskan uh, music has several playlists, many playlists. I think uh, maybe I have, yeah, oh, I had some of those there. And um, the Alaskan indie is now a, a category that has been recognized worldwide. Um, we should also mention that including the first playlist that we have by a guest DJ, Katie B, and then we're hoping to do more with other beloved local DJs in future. So those of you in the room and on Zoom, we're going to come for you and get your playlists. But now to talk about what we have learned in the Alaska Music Census and maybe some other things, here is Marion Call. Thank you. 